is not using Priority Taunt, so it could still weave that through since Armatail doesn't block that. Exciting to see what both trainers lead here. We get a lot of options, and we do immediately see that Entei we've been discussing. We do. It's going to be the Entei and the Wellspring Ogre Pond for Enrique and the Landorus Incarnate and the Wellspring Ogre Pond here for James for this very first game in this best of three. It's a delightfully awkward matchup where uh, you've got Landorus, who'd love to just take down this Entei with a uh, ground-type attack, but not so easy with the two Ogre Pond next to them. And then uh, both the Ogre Pond either have the options of uh, trying to pull attacks away or just to attack themselves with a super effective attack into either of the opponents. Uh, it's you know, a little tricky to pull off with the opposing Ogre Pond there to stop it. I feel like Enrique almost has a bit of a leg up in this situation because you are going to be doing neutral damage to the Wellspring Ogre Pond on the other side. So it almost feels like you can always get some type of attack down with that Entei, but you don't have that Assault Vest that a lot of the Entei in this format are actually holding. So you're going to be taking a bit more damage from something like that Landers Incarnate. We are going to see a Terrestrialization right away though to kick off this game. It's going to be one of the Ogre Pond taking that Terra, you get that special defense boost thanks to the Embody Aspect ability, but more importantly, you also give a pretty big boost to your Ivy Cudgels. A spiky shield, though, coming through from James means that you aren't going to be taking any damage on your Ogre Pond this turn, and uh, neither is Landorus. Yeah, just scouting out what's happening here. I think that's a very reasonable play. And uh, what's even better after seeing that Terrastalization, going to make things a little bit easier for James next turn, knowing that uh, Terrastalization's off the board for the rest of the game. It does, but that Terrastalization still feels so nice into something like the Landorus. You're still going to be taking a little bit less from those Earth Powers and those Sludge Bombs, but now you have opened yourself up to that potential in the back. Yeah, I think the uh, the Ogre Pond on James' side, too, uh, looking even more critical now. And yeah, I think that was the one uneven element of the leads where Landorus could previously hit Ogre Pond with a super effective attack. Uh, but, uh, you know, Enrique, smartly in response, is taking that option off the board, keeping this matchup a little bit more neutral for now. Yeah, because you also get a chance to hit that Ogre Pond super effectively with the Horn Leech. It doesn't have the Water Absorb ability anymore since it overrode that with the Terrastalization. So James does have a lot of answers to the Ogre Pond on Enrique's side. But how can this end day continue to support this partner? James is going to make a switch here. That Landorus Incarnate is going to leave the field in favor of this Rillaboom. And that's really where things can get even dicier is now you're also going to be boosting up those grass type attacks on your Ogre Pond. Yeah, I mean, Ogre Pond using follow me, but I think it's already the target. I might already just be the target there as the Horn Leech is going to be a one hit knockout. Not only is it super effective, but thank you for the grassy terrain Rillaboom. That is one Pokemon down here for Enrique as James takes a Pokemon lead. The Entei, though, is able to go for the Sacred Fire, but it misses the Ogre Pond. That's a huge miss. Yeah, it's a fantastic attack, except for that miss chance. Uh, one of the more accurate moves that can still miss, but that does happen, and that becomes a fantastic turn from James. I think he would have been very happy with that kind of no matter what happened, where you get rid of the uh, Ogre Pond and the threat of that follow me and your opponent's terrestrialized Pokemon and uh, ends up giving up nothing in return other than having to make a switch. And now you also have this Rillaboom on the field that can go for Fake Out and really help just kind of keep the momentum rolling that James has started to accumulate in this first First game. Yeah, and unlike Ogre Pond, you know, Moongus can theoretically help redirect attacks, but uh, not looking too good against two Grass-type Pokemon, right? Can't use Rage Powder, can't use Spore. Uh, kind of just hanging out here. Uh, perhaps gonna have to go for some offense with Pollen Puff. Yeah, it does have Pollen Puff, and it also has Clear Smog. Enrique's Amoongus is critically not running Protect. It does have the Rocky Helmet, so it's going to be doing a little bit of chip damage every time it gets hit with a contact physical attack move from this Rillaboom or this Ogre Pond. But, as you said, otherwise Amoongus isn't really doing too much here. Yeah, and like Entei can defend itself here some, right? Where uh, there are, is a full Grass-type Pokemon and a partial Grass-type Pokemon on the other side of the field, but uh, you don't really want to be trading blows here too aggressively. You know, getting down to just two Pokemon quickly would be pretty scary. Uh, not that Rillaboom itself is threatening a whole lot of damage against the Fire-type Pokemon either, but we're going to see a little bit with this Grassy Glide. I mean, that's still a pretty significant amount of chip, and if that's not going to be enough to soften up this Entei, well, Ivy Cudgel, I think it's going to be a little bit of an over-KO. So Entei is going to leave the field very quickly, 
and just like that, Enrique is down to his final two Pokemon in this first game. Pond Pump is still gonna dish out just a little bit, but James still has four Pokemon. Yeah, not a bad little bit of damage, but yeah, I mean, again, a fantastic trade for James, right? Uh, Rillaboom really uh, making a big difference in this game, causing uh, the knockout in the first turn, and then, you know, that chip damage, uh, avoiding a second Sacred Fire coming out, uh, really nice. And now, uh, Fluttermane's here. Uh, this time, the Grass-type Pokemon, uh, both looking pretty excited for their opportunity here, uh, potentially putting some big damage on the board, and Amoongus is kind of helpless here, right? Uh, all those powder moves just not effective against the Grass-types on the other side. Yeah, I don't think, if you're James, you're worried too much about that pollen puff damage output, so you can kind of just go for this flutter main. The moon blast comes out first. Rillaboom does get knocked out to that, so a uh, big one hit knockout there. James just kind of shrugging. Okay, well, maybe wasn't totally expecting it to do that much, but if it's not going to be my Rillaboom, it sure is going to be my Ogre Pond. That Horn Leech took that flutter main down so low, and Ogre Pond healed all the way back up. Yeah, I mean, it's still a pretty good trade for James, right? You know, when you have a big lead like this, uh, the important thing is just not to have, like, zero value turns. Uh, a grassy glide there, you know, as we see now, would have been great, but, um, you know, didn't do anything too crazy. Still got a bunch of damage back. I think uh, as long as he can find a way to pick up this Fluttermane without anything too crazy happening, he's looking really good in this match. Yeah, you can still double in here. This is going to be a Choice Specs Fluttermane, so no protect on either the Fluttermane or the Amoongus, so this should be a sealed deal. And just for a bit of an insurance policy, James is going to use the Terrastalization onto the Landorus, just so there's no funny business. That Poison Terra is going to be so nice to keep this Landorus safe from an incoming Moonblast. Yeah, every attack left in the game if Poison resists, so a uh, very high value Terra if Landorus ends up needing it, and perhaps it will with Ogre Pond going down. Yeah, it's another big knockout for that Fluttermane to take, but unfortunately that's going to be the last one that it gets as the Earth Power into the Fluttermane is enough to pick it up, and Amoongus is all by itself to deal with James's final two Pokemon. Yeah, that's a tough spot to be. You see the Pollen Puff uh, not able to come out here because of the knockout. Uh, I guess you have to go for it, right? I don't know that Enrique was really expecting that to land, but uh, you know, at this point in the game, you know, it's not like a spore is going to get him any closer to winning. Uh, now with two Pokemon remaining, uh, Mooka isn't going to be able to do any real damage to either of them. Uh, game's looking pretty close. Fantastic start by James. Yeah, it was really, really well played there. Just some early aggression off the bat made it easy to kind of get to this end game point. Forcing out that Terra right away from Enrique's Ogre Pond as well, as you called it, really opened itself up to just getting exploited. Yeah, I thought it was just a great pivot to uh, James doing a really good job of like, uh, not exposing himself to too much risk. You know, the Sacred Fire miss is big, right? It changes the mm -hmm. way the rest it of the does. game plays out, where uh, I think it kind of just took Enrique totally out of it instead of it just being like a little bit of a disadvantageous trade. Uh, but still, I mean, uh, there's a lot of really good things there. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind is a Pokemon we did not see in that match, the Frigoraph. Certainly, um, it would have been nice if it had been available, but James uh, correctly just anticipating that it wasn't going to be a problem and playing around its absence really well. What's nice about the, I think, the Ferrigoraph is that you can go for that spread damage, but Ferrigoraph, I think, in, in a lot of instances, players have figured out a way to get around it. And especially when you do have the Taunt on the Rillaboom that's not a priority user, you can shut down a lot of things like the Protect, even the Trick Room, if Enrique wanted to go for that slower option on the team. They can't do that anymore. I think the one thing about the Entei is I'd love to see it do a little bit more. I think it got kept in check a lot by what James ended up bringing on the lead, but Sacred Fire, like you fish for the burn there, right? If that miss doesn't happen, do you just burn the Ogre Pond or do you just outright KO it? Yeah, I think that changes the game a lot. So uh, I think this is a set where winning game one is a big deal. Uh, I think it's a pretty neutral matchup, right? Uh, James did a very good job of keeping pressure on that Entei and the Ogre Pond, kind of realizing those are the biggest threats for him closing the game out. And uh, perhaps, you know, if Enrique can position just a little bit differently, it's easy to imagine it going another way. I think every game that these teams or these players play with these teams could go either way. So having that one in the bag is really big. I agree. And just as the, the kind of the final attack into the flutter main. It's gonna go ahead and bring James up 1-0 in this series. We are still playing a best of three. So Enrique has a chance to be able to bring it back if he's able to win this second game. But James could also just close it out and advance on to the finals where Toller Webb is waiting in the wings. Enrique is now gonna be leading with the flutter main in the Ogre Pond. And for James, it's the Landorus and the Ogre Pond of his own.
So Jim's sticking with what works here. And uh, again, you know, it's kind of a fun matchup between Pokemon here. I think this time, you know, the Fluttermane is the quickest Pokemon in the field, gives uh, Enrique a little bit more uh, aggression in this particular position. But also, you know, we saw last game with the double protect from James just to scout things out, maybe even more appealing in the situation where you can see what move Fluttermane's locked into. Uh, but the double protect also really does limit your mobility, right? Where it really exposes you on the next turn. So uh, James has a lot of options here to try and get things in a better position for him. Yeah, I think too what's uh, really unique about this position for Enrique is that he can just save the Terra now. So you'll actually see that this Wellspring Ogre Pond will leave so that Incineroar can come in and get a nice attack drop onto this Ogre Pond. And that's really important because if you start to limit that damage output, it feels nice to be able to kind of just get a big attack into it in the next turn. But it is going to be a double protect here from James, so what's this Flutter going to lock into? It's going to be the Icy, icy Wind. wind. Interesting. So I really like the switch by Enrique there, where he's kind of covering for this double protect. Like, all right, well, if you do the same thing you did last game, now I have a fake out and two Pokemon who just protected on the last turn that are uh, easy to abuse now. Uh, I think that's a, it's really clever, right? Where uh, the, the flip side, though, is because of King Gambit in the back, uh, both sides have to be very careful. It, yeah, uh, predictably, yeah. Like, oh, I don't want anything with that, where uh, accidentally setting off the Defiant right here could be devastating. It really could. I mean, if it, James brought it to that first game, then that's something that Enrique absolutely has to consider. But what's nice about this is that you almost force James into a position where he switches the King Gambit, hoping to take that icy wind drop. But now it might be a little bit vulnerable to what about a flare blitz? That could absolutely be coming that direction. But it's just going to be a terror poison on this Landorus to kick things off. And then we'll have to find out what this Landorus is going to do next. Now, there's two Pokemon that can take a lot of damage from it. So did James make the right call? Oh, it's no, just going it to be a fake out. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> honestly, a really, really great turn here for Enrique. You get a pivot, you get the Ogre Pawn in, and you also stop this incoming damage where you can start to plan around it. Yeah, good safe turn. And now, uh, sort of an interesting matchup where what will the Landorus try to do? Do you just go for the Sludge Bomb into the Ogre Pond, or do you try to pick up a, a, a cheeky Earth Power onto Incineroar, perhaps assuming that you know, Enrique is uh, trying to play one step ahead, assuming that you know, you're going to play around the Follow Me? Yeah, at this point, I, it's, it's so hard because that really does feel like a coin flip. you got to figure out heads or tails. Yeah. What is James going to do? Yeah, these are the situations where it's so great to have won that first game, right? Where James wants to play a little bit bold. He's not betting his tournament on it. Where Enrique, if he gets this call wrong, it could be the end of it for him. Yeah, it could. But we are going to see the terrestrialization onto the Wellspring Ogre Palm once again. I love this play because you might be getting rid of your resist there to the, uh, the Earth Power, but you do actually lose your weakness to that Sludge Bomb, plus you get this nice special defense boost. And they could really pay off in dividends here. But Wellspring Ogre Pond is also just faster. So you're going to get this water attack boost as well into the landers. It's not quite enough to be able to knock it out. So this Incineroar is going to have to take that full power Earth Power, and it just gets one hit knocked out. Oh, that's a big knockout. I both sides getting some value from the terrestrialization there, but the free swords dance for the King Gambit on top of the knockout from James. Uh, I think he's loving that turn. I was thinking it was a very nice, safe play by Enrique. Like, oh, you, you terrestrialize there, you avoid the sludge bomb being super threatening, but doesn't cover for the option of James just predicting that he's not going to use follow me, and James cashes in on a great read. It's a really good read too, because now you have this Entei in front of you, and it feels like it's so vulnerable to almost any sort of attack. This King Gambit could go for a Cowtail Cleave into either the Entei or the Ogre Pond. It's going to feel really nice to get that big source of damage, but Sucker Punch also works great. You have your black glasses equipped. You're chilling. Without the Follow Me is going to negate that. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of things that can happen here, too. I'll be curious to see what... Uh, but, oh, so it's Sucker Punch misses. Entei opting to uh, not go for the extreme speed. Earth Power is going to come in, do a pretty sizable amount of damage, actually. Yeah, it's going to do about half, and so it feels really nice to be able to have that special defense boost. But, oh, the Sacred Fire into the King Gambit does get that 50-50 burn. And now all that sword stance mitigated. Yeah, effectively just back to neutral attack and nearly knocked out for doing nothing in return. So this time it's Enrique who gets the better end of the trade. You know, a decent bit of damage down in Ogre Pond, but I don't think nearly enough for what he gave up. Yeah, it almost feels like that was a bit... It was a really, really big play. Had it paid off, that would have been a huge KO and a, just a ton of damage here for James while he was already ahead. So he can very much afford to take that risk in this current game. But it is going to have to be a safer turn here as this Landorus protects itself from an extreme speed. 
And this Ogre Pong goes for the Ivy Cudgel, which is just going to go ahead and finish off this King Gambit. It was already at low HP. Had it gotten off another attack, you would be in such a good spot. James still has a couple of Pokemon in the back, though, to be able to take that King Gambit's place. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess either of the Pokemon he brings in now could uh, help out with the uh, the situation that Portlanderus finds itself in. I think Rillaboom's probably the more likely option to threaten the fake out onto Entei or a knock on onto Ogre Pond. You know, uh, continue to uh, pick up that situation where uh, it's a difficult read for Enrique because you're threatening something very dangerous into both slots. I think what's tough about that too is that you enter into yet another sort of 50-50 because if you bring that Rillaboom onto the field, yes, you get the grassy glide potential into the Ogre Pawn, but does it protect? Does Entei simply just go for another extreme speed to finish off this Landers? It would be plenty. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's such a fun spot for James here. If you could find a way to connect with that Entei before Landorus goes down, you're moving on to the finals. Otherwise, the two Grass-type Pokemon team probably want to be out together and kind of use as the sort of synergy we saw in the last game. Uh, predictably no uh, Amoongus this time after the Miskies last game, and we see a spiky shield from Ogre Pond, a little frightened in front of this Rillaboom. But it's a good call because now it's just going to be a big trade here for Enrique as that Landorus goes down. James gets to switch back in this Wellspring Ogre Pond for free and with with no damage taken, but their Gorilla Boom is gonna, gonna get a little recoil here. Yeah, it attacks into the spiky shield, so another play where, you know, both sides had to make a read and Enrique wins again, picks up that knockout. Uh, Ogre Pond's HP is going the wrong direction for James now, and uh, you know, the fake out lost for nothing. We'll get another chance of that because there's only two Pokemon remaining, and we'll have to see if James's Ogre Pond can be the one who uh, flips the direction of this game as Enrique is taking control. He is because he still has that Flutter Mane in the back. It went for the Icy Wind earlier on in the game, but it switched out at full HP. So that is still going to be a very scary Pokemon to have to deal with. So James is going to try to preserve this grassy terrain for as long as possible, just so that you might even be able to get the Grassy Glider or a Clean KO with a Wood Hammer. Yeah, and we saw how much damage that that Flutter Mane did to the Rillaboom last time. The Grassy Trade is going to be very important because with how quick Flutter Mane is, it's going to be very devastating if it gets out safely. And uh, you know, you're going to have to pick up at least one knockout pretty quickly uh, with two, at least partial grass type Pokemon facing down Entei, and uh, Entei's just gonna play it safe for now. It is, and this is one of the reasons why having the clear amulet set is so nice, because with Assault Vest, you don't get this option of having that protect available. And so, a big read here. The Horn Leech also into James's Ogre Pond is going to give such a huge HP boost to the Ogre Pond on Enrique's side. Especially when you go for the Ivy Cudgel, it's just going to be a huge double protect. Yeah, I mean, that could be game, right? Where we saw the combination of these two Pokemon knock out Entei last game. Uh, this time we see the Ogre Pond on Enrique's side moving first and doing more than half of James's Ogre Pond's health and damage there. So uh, now, I mean, how do you cover Entei attacking Rillaboom and Ogre Pond attacking its opposite number, right? Uh, seems like a really great position for Enrique. He's done a fantastic job uh, after the first couple turns of this game. Yeah, I wonder how much extreme speed would do here. Like, if Entei decides to go for an extreme speed into James's Ogre Pond, is it enough to be able to knock it out? We won't see it, though, as the grassy glide into Enrique's Ogre Pond will be enough for a KO, despite the healing that it was able to get from that Horn Leech the turn before. And so, what can this Entei do? Nothing. It's just the Ivy Cudgel from James to eliminate that threat. And all of a sudden, Enrique is down to that Flutter Mane. The so Flutter Mane's going to have a lot of work to put yeah. in. So never mind. Now we're back to exactly the same situation in game one. I think Enrique positioned really well there, but, but because that's a one shot, then uh, it doesn't matter that uh, Entei doesn't, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not no. great. Not great. <laughs> it, the speed can be the speed can be so so brutal sometimes because in that situation, I think Entei always wants to go for something like a sacred fire in that position. Yeah. Maybe you get really lucky, you just get the knockout, or you're able to get that burn. But now it's just the flutter main. Yeah, just not fast enough, right? Where Enrique needed one more attack, I think, with one of his other Pokemon. It seemed like he might get it, but uh, his Pokemon doing so much, or James's Pokemon, I should say, doing so much damage that uh, they clean up that turn with two clean one hit knockouts and. Uh, you know, Flutter Mane's really in a tough spot now. Yeah, it can it can still go for the the dazzling gleam here, but the grassy glide <laughs> is just a crit to knock it out in one go. And James Evans in a 2-0 is gonna win this top four match and move on to the grand finals. Well, that became very decisive very quickly there, where uh, James making some great reads and uh, you know throughout the middle of the.